Okay, what do we have here? Looks like some copper. Very thin copper. For some, uh, linen, you know, some car amplifier, you know, power wire. Some hydrochloric acid. And we're going to make some copper chloride. But this should dissolve pretty quickly. Because it is very thin. Well, I mean very thin. Very thin. Figured it didn't react that way. I just dissolve it. We'll see. It may just eat it. But I want it to oxidize. We'll dilute it by 50 milliliters, but it's just eating it. We're gonna have a bowl over. Kind of unexpected. The copper is too thinly divided. It's getting really hot, so I'm having to just spray the outside of the, the cup to cool it down. I did not expect that to react that way. Well, that's all right, you let me learn. It's about eight it up now. We have a good fume hood. Never even caught a whiff of that. We're going to have to do a rethink on this. Okay. We screwed that first round up royally. We forgot to oxidize it, first of all. But it was too finely divided. Too thin. And it just ate it up. So we cooked us up a batch of copper oxide, or oxide coated, or oxidized copper. There we go. And we're going to take some of this, put it in the hydrochloric acid, and see if we can make copper chloride. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're going to try it again. Uh. Alright, here we go. I'm still gun shy. I want to put one in and see if it starts to react like very violently. All right, good, it's not. All right. That is what I want to see. Right there. It's already becoming, uh, it, it's supposed to turn that color, and it's only supposed to get darker. So, that is good news. Not fizz over into a exploding pile of goo. Winter, winter chicken dinner so far, and we're nice and nasty and black. All right, we'll be back. Oh yeah, one other thing, you leave it uncovered so the air can get to it. You want to oxidize this, you want oxygen to get in there, okay? But we're gonna let it do it on its own. So whatever copper's left in this go fill material, after it went through the vinegar and sea salt treatment, we're gonna see if we can go, we just spend a couple of days letting it soak in the copper chloride. And, uh, hey, voila. We eat up the rest of the copper, rest of the base materials that might be in this right here. Ha. Huh. Yeah. We'll see. So, it's looking very good. It didn't explode this time, which is awesome. All right, I'm impatient. Came out this morning. It's probably, I don't know. How many hours? Six or seven hours of trying to make the copper chloride. <laughs> Yesterday I called it called copper chlorate. Copper chloride. And it was barely turning from the original just pale green color 
than it was yesterday. So I stuck the air bubbler in it. If you can see the centrifugal force, the little whirlpool action. We're getting there, we're stirring it up. You know, laying the oxygen, took the, you know, oxidizing. Okay, the juice, and it's turned four shades darker in an hour. So we're expediting this process of making the copper chloride. Make sure I make fun of myself, I'm sure somebody else does. This should take no more than, I don't know, 24 hours and it should be done. One week later. Ah, that just hasn't gone well. One week. Uh, I think I put too much copper in this. We spilt another one that actually was was promising. I've been setting for four days. We spilled it. Spilled it. Every bit. Gone. We're going to give it a go with this uh, copper chloride. I think I called it copper chlorate earlier in the video. We're going to add to our sample gold filled pieces. That's already showing gold full separation being washed in vinegar and sea salt or soaked or boiled or cooked or whatever. So, we're going to go ahead and add a token amount of this copper a week, more than likely, copper chloride solution. We're going to heat it up. I don't know if this is concentrated enough to do the job we want it to do. The copper chloride will eat out the rest of the copper base metal and the gold filled material, leaving us just with gold foils. No nitric acid used whatsoever, but I don't, my gut's telling me that's not going to be strong enough. Okay, actually a little bit of a promising start here. It does have my hopes up. I've already added about 3 ml of hydrogen peroxide, store bought, and it changed the oxidation state of the solution according to another YouTuber boober. That's what happens when it turns, you know, a different shade of green. Regardless of the reason why, you don't want to put too much of it in there because it will pull the gold into aquaregia into some into solution. You don't want that. Okay, uh, hour two. This is promising. Look at the gold foils floating on top. Ha! Uh, we, we this is what we wanted to see. We wanted to see this get really dark because that's. It's eating away the copper that is left in this gold filled material. It's pulling it into solution. Okay, uh, just not even an hour later from that last update, it's changed colors. The solution has changed colors again. A worrisome color. Uh, we're going to check and see if we have gold in solution. If we do, oops. I guess 6 ml of hydrogen peroxide was too much. But this, I'm not liking the look of, looks of this. So we'll be back and we'll test for uh, precious metals in solution. All right. Let's see if we made a big boo-boo here. Um, we look negative. No gold in solution, making that golden color from the very, very dark green color that <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Alright, we added it to a 250 ml beaker, added about another 125 ml of our presumably weak copper chloride. Uh, we added another 3 ml even though I said I wasn't going to, I did anyways, of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And we have the desired color, if that's what the desired color is, supposed to be. Uh, it's back. 
from that amber color that I'm kind of scared me, but I'm thinking it's iron. We have some, had some metal parts or some other parts. We have iron, or it was brass that was dissolving. I don't know. But we do have a check that we can do for the iron. We will do that here in just a little bit. But right now, we'll let this heat up and get warm. A lot of gold foils. You can see over there. Yeah. Some gold foliage is always good. All right, we're back. We're gonna, we have three here on the spot plate. I think that's what you call this thing. We have uh, three of the pods, I guess, or whatever, loaded up with ammonia. What is that, ammonium? It's ammonium thiocyanate, excuse me. Ammonium thiocyanate. All three, we're gonna be tested for iron and solution. I'm worried that I, we have iron in solution with our uh, go uh, excuse me or copper chloride experiment so what we're going to do is we're going to go to one of our waste treatment jars where I'm almost certain there's iron in solution because we have been we put an iron uh, I guess what you would call it a, a rod cap is the technical name for it a rod piston it's made of iron you put iron in the, you know, in a copper in a copper chloride solution. It does what? It will go into solution as the copper cements out. So we know we have copper in solution. So this first one here, we're going to put this material from that waste treatment jar. And look at that. That's bright red. That's as red as it gets. So that's positive for iron in solution. Next, we're going to take the, acet the acetate, the copper two acetate we created by using the vinegar and sea salt method, okay, to break down the base metals and the gold fuel material. We did the same thing. Now we have this solution that I guess you call it iron acetate, I guess. So let's see if we got iron in solution in that one. Absolutely, look at that. Not as heavily concentrated as the chloride solution, but it's there, that's for sure. Now, we're going to test the actual copper chloride solution that we're using to break down the base metals in this gold filled material so we can recover the gold foils. Simple. Ooh, that's not turning red. Excuse me. I'll just drop acid on them. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. All right. This is mostly foils now, as you can see. Very little of the base metal is left. This uh, copper chloride has this just annihilated what was left of the copper in there. So even if it was brass, it's what copper and zinc. It's still got the copper. As you can see, mostly just foils. Okay, we're rolling up on 24 hours. The gold field material and copper chloride. And, uh, but, you know, because we was gonna pull this at 24 hours and stop the experiment and see where we're at. But, being the former Democrat that I am, I'm changing the rules. I had to turn this thing off because I just didn't trust it running all night while I was asleep. So it went virtually uh, close to 10 hours without heat. That's right. So I want to give this two or three more hours, you know, in the heat because it didn't get quite cold last night, around 20 degrees. So the lab was very cold. Did that have an effect? Don't know. We did check, I did check the, the gold film material in here and it is painfully thin. The uh, base metals are almost gone. So with my Democratic Party rule change, uh, we should have close to all the base metals in solution. I said at noon, it's, it's, it's 8 o'clock right now, 8 a.m. We're going to give it to noon. All right, we're about 
two hours away. So we're going to take that out. I hate to go fill material out. We'll spit it out in a minute. A lot of gold foils in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to test for uh, golden solution. Hopefully none of the gold has went into the solution, but we're going to check for that. Yeah, we're going to use the yieldy spot plate for this. We don't want to catch a little piece of gold here. Drop some of that in there. Stand us out. And we're going to see if we have gold solution. Nope, we do not. Absolutely positively negative for precious metals. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, it's time to take this stuff off out of the crock pot. Let's get her filtered out. We're going to uh, wash this. Go fill material off. A lot of foil going in that time. Okay. And what do we have? <laughs> that looks like a bunch of gold foils. Let's examine and find out. Alright, let's see what we got in here. A really thick piece. That was, that's just nothing but foils. Look, foil. That's just peeling apart. Foils coming right off of it. Nothing but foils. Now, one thing I was interested in was this little flower. It seemed to be holding up to that. Foil. Just a foil. That's all. There was, excuse me, no nitric acid used in this experiment to recover these gold foils, which I will put now into aqua region. Now, is it totally? I said 90%. Still a little bit of copper left in this, but I think we can get this in aqua region. That's what we want to do. You can see the spot of gold down there from the foils. We're not gonna do the filters today. We'll process them later. Uh, we're just going to do the uh, the foils and get them in the aqua region real quick and conclude this experiment as a success. Once we get that in the aqua region, it's a success. All right. All right, we got the uh, hydrochloric acid in and just tap water, it doesn't matter. And we're going to warm this up. Once this gets warm, we're going to lay the nitric acid to it, put it in the aqua region. And if all goes well, call this a success. Alright, we're starting off with about 2 ml. And about 3, excuse me. 3 milliliters of dilute nitric acid. Reagent grade 70%. Let's start off with, with that, roughly three milliliters right at. And uh, let's see if it does anything. It should put the gold foils right in the solution. Really fast enough to not like it. We'll go ahead and add three more ml. Making a total of 6 ml of nitric acid. There it is. It's nasty. There's definitely copper in there, and for sure, it is very, very nasty. So, 
it didn't finish the job and it got it 90%. We got ahead of ourselves. It's in Aqua Region. We have precious metals in solution, quite a high concentration. We're going to let this just stay here and boil. Then we'll filter it out. Use some SMB. Get the same old, same old. And clean it up. But it worked. We got it. With vinegar and sea salt. That's good old copper chloride. No nitric required. No nitric is required to recover it. To refine it, yes. You can't get around that. Don't use bleach. Use nitric for refinement. No recovery, hey, you have an alternative. It may take longer, but you have a viable alternative. A whole lot cheaper. All right, we're done.